Hello, people. This is Mike Portnoy, and when I'm not beating the hell out of a Hello Kitty kit, I'm watching Loudwire. All right, so death is a bitch. It is. And uh, I think it, it's, uh, it's sort of a cliche, but uh, a lot of people don't truly get recognized for how great they were until they pass away. I think, I unfortunately... I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think, unfortunately, A.J. Perro might be one of those people because I think now people are really starting to talk about how awesome he was. Um, he was so anthemic. He really knew how to drive a song forward, like very, very few drummers could, in my opinion. So I wanted to know, first of all, uh, from the opinion of a pretty damn good drummer yourself, what made AJ so special? First of all, I agree with you wholeheartedly about people not getting credit until they passed away. That's a very, very sad thing that you have noticed in the age of social media. It's like suddenly everybody comes forward. Once somebody dies, like how great he was, and he was so special. And, it's like, God, you kind of, why didn't you appreciate him when he, while he was alive? Like, when AJ passed away, the outpouring of love uh, for him as a human being and the outpouring of appreciation for him as a drummer was incredible. Yeah. Uh, suddenly, everybody's talking about how great he was. It's like, you know, I was talked to the guy last week. Like, you should have told him how great he was while he was here, you know? Like, so hopefully they're looking down and you could still, still get that... Uh, appreciation in the afterlife. But in any case, yeah, AJ was so unbelievably um, underrated. And, uh, you know, people know his drumming from like, you know, they picture just like what he played on We're Not Gonna Take It or whatever, which yeah. is, a, well, first of all, yeah, as straight ahead as that drumming is, it is anthemic, as you said. It, yeah. And that is one of the most famous drum intros of all time. So that in itself puts AJ in the, in the, the drummer hall of fame because yeah. he's got one of the most, world-renowned, world-recognizable drum intros of all drum intros of all time. But that being said, he also, he had such chops. If you would see those guys live, he was all over the place, almost to the point of overplaying. You know, at times I would watch him, it's like, oh my God, dude, like, settle down. He's like literally all over the place. He had speed and chops, and till the day he died, he actually got better. He's one of those few drummers that got better with age. And um, I saw him playing with Adrenaline Mob uh, a few months before he passed away, which was my old band that yeah. he stepped in for. And, you know, I remember when he joined Adrenaline Mob after I left, everyone was like, oh, how is he going to play all those Mike Portnoy drum parts or whatever? It's like, he could do it. Don't, don't, AJ, he's, he's got this. Yeah. And sure enough, live, he's like all over the place, had all the chops. And even at 55 years old and, you know, with all due respect, he was overweight and he was getting bigger and he was getting older. He still was getting better, and and uh, and I think that was never fully appreciated. You know, hopefully uh, people will see that and appreciate that now, better late than never, because he was really a damn good drummer. Yeah, and you've been in this position before, you know, sort of filling the shoes for someone who's passed away. Of course, the Rev for Ven Sevenfold. You went you went out and you played with them. Is your approach to playing the upcoming Twisted Sister tour? going to be like what you did with Avenge, where you take the guy's parts and you play it straight the way that he wrote it? Well, in both situations, uh, it was Im it's important for me to come in there and completely honor and respect my fallen drumming brother, you know? Uh, in the case of AJ, I was friends with AJ for the last 20 years or so. In the case of The Rev, he and I were casual acquaintances. He was a big fan of mine. He would always talk about me in interviews and stuff like that. So uh, we got to know each other through texting, and okay. I would always thank him for always saying kind things about me in the press. Uh, but we weren't really friends. But in any case, in both situations, with, with AJ and with The Rev, um, it's important for me to honor those guys and realize the reason I'm there it has nothing to do with me. I, I wasn't hired to be Mike Portnoy yeah. with Avenged or with Twisted. I'm hired to be there to finish the job for the guys that can't be there and respect, you know, respect both of them. And in both cases, uh, you know, live with Twisted and live with Avenged, you know, both bands were coming right off that loss and very emotional, you know, and in the cases of both bands, live on stage, there was a backdrop honoring each of them and we would talk about them during the show and, and honor them and remember them. 
And in both cases, I, I had to be there to re respect them and play their parts. And I, I don't like ever want to, I'm normally on stage, I'm a very flamboyant, very like crazy, oh, yeah. like trying sure. to, Steal the attention. I'm definitely like a, you know that type of drummer. But in those cases with Avenged and with Twisted, I would even say to the guys, "Look, I'm I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be my normal self. I'm gonna be subdued. I'm gonna hold it back. I don't want to. The attention shouldn't be about me. It's about honoring, you know, the fallen drummer, honoring the music, respecting your guys' legacy and what you do as a band. And you know, if you want more from me, then tell me. I'll give you more. But otherwise, I'm here to just do my job. And the last tour is coming soon, 2016, the final Twisted Sister tour. Uh, it's now becoming uh, more an ev of an ev event because it's the last one. And I think everybody is sure that this is the last one. Uh, well, I, th I think the skeptics and the fans and the promoters may not be sure, but I could tell you that Dee Snyder is damn sure of it. Yeah. He even says it from the stage. He's like, you know, in his words, this ain't, Scorpions and Ozzy and you know all these bands that are doing these farewell tours 20 years later. I saw the Who's Farewell Tour in 82. What was that, 33 <laughs> years ago? <laughs> and now, you know. Ooh. But yeah, they're, they're doing, um, it's not even a tour. Uh, Twisted at this point just does a handful of shows. And uh, I know the plan for them is they're gonna go out next year. It's the 40th anniversary with D in the band. Uh, they're calling the tour 40 and fuck it. And that's it. Yep, they're going to do a handful of shows and pull the plug. And Twisted Sister, uh, truly one of the most quintessential live bands. Like absolutely. When you see one a of the live greatest live band, bands ever. You watch them and you just go, this is absolutely what every live band wants to be. I don't care who totally. you Totally. And people don't realize that. But if you see Twisted Sister live, and now their big thing is to headline festivals over in Europe every summer, you can't follow them. I don't care if you're fucking Slayer, Motorhead, Iron Maiden. You can't follow, Twisted Sister is a band you can't follow. They fucking wipe the stage. And I say they. They yes. wipe the stage with, ev with anybody on the bill. And they are hands down one of the greatest live bands of all time. Dee Snyder is one of the greatest front men of all time. JJ, JJ French is, is the Robin to Dee's Batman. You know, it's his faithful sidekick. Uh, there's literally, and I used to see them in the clubs back in the early 80s, before the, the MTV Golden Age, before the hits and everything like that. I used to go see them in the clubs, and they were, it was like seeing Kiss without makeup in the club. Well, actually, they were wearing makeup. It was like seeing Kiss <laughs> yeah, in the clubs. They were doing what Kiss was doing at Madison Square Garden. They were doing at, at Speaks in Island yeah. Park. And they were, you know, every night killed it. And they still do, 40 years later. So with that in mind, what are you most looking forward to? being able to play with this behemoth of a band? Well, I did, I did a dozen shows with them this last year. I did the whole uh, summer run this year. I hope I could see it through to the end uh, with the final shows next year. It's all gonna depend on my schedule and availability with the Winery Dogs. But in a perfect world, if I can do the final shows, for me, it would be an honor to see it through to the end and be a part of that final chapter. And I'm their eighth drummer. You know, AJ, AJ was the drummer for, 33 years, but they were five guys before him, and Joe Franco was in there for a little while after him. So I'm actually eight, and I think eight is enough. So they're hoping that I could do the tour. <laughs> and I hope so too, because uh, to me, it's been a huge, huge honor playing with those guys. To me, growing up as a Long Island kid, they were, they were my local heroes. As far as I'm concerned, they are one of the quintessential New York bands. It's, you know, it's uh, the Ramones, Kiss, Twisted Sister, as far as I'm concerned, that's New York for you.